Terry Kitchen is an award-winning contemporary folk singer-songwriter from the Boston area. He began writing his songs sometime during summer camp, inspired by the Beatles. His songs are referred to as portraits of ordinary people and emotions captured with extraordinary compassion, honesty, and humor. He has released 10 CDs of his original music since the 1990s. And some of his songs have earned nomination and award. He has also recently published a novel, The Next Best Thing. Uh, and this book, it was set in the 1980s Boston music scene along with Aerosmith and Jake Giles and the Cars when they were at their peak as well as uh, what Terry noted, uh, 2,000 lesser known bands, including his own, known as the Loose Ties, who are engaged in nightly battle for existence and glory. <coughs> So Terry will be uh, sharing a few pages from his novel, as well as a few of his original songs. And lastly, he stated that he believes sharing songs is a way of getting people to empathize with each other so we can all remember we are in this together. So please give a warm welcome to Terry. Thank you. This woman left her lights on and her car wouldn't start I had jumper cables in my trunk But I was late and it was raining I was wearing my good suit I said sorry but I have to run I rolled back up my window I started to pull out Then I heard my conscience whisper Turn this car around Life is hard enough, time is short enough, hearts are scarred enough From the hurting that we do, love is scarce enough, joy is rare enough We're all strong enough to help each other through Today you might need me, tomorrow I'll need you So let's not turn away Life is hard enough There's a family at church A father and two girls The mother lost her fight this year My wife's got the youngest In her Sunday school class Now every lesson's crystal clear can't stop bad things from happening We can't even know why But we can give each other courage And comfort when we cry Life is hard enough Time is short enough Hearts are scarred enough From the hurting that we do Love is scarce enough Joy is rare enough We're all strong to help each other through Today you might need me Tomorrow I'll need you So let's not turn away Life is hard enough And maybe it's the little things That make it all worthwhile Those simple acts of kindness That make each other smile Life is hard enough, time is short enough, hearts are scarred enough. From the hurting that we do, love is scarce enough, joy is rare enough, we're all strong enough to help each other through. Today you might need me, tomorrow I'll need you. So let's not turn away. Life is hard enough mm -hmm. So let's not turn away Life is hard enough Life is hard enough 
life is hard enough Life is hard enough well, Thank you. Thanks so much, and thanks to, uh, to Cheryl for inviting me, inviting me down here today. And great to hear uh, hear the, um, some poetry and uh, and some fiction. Back in uh, around 1968, Paul Simon wrote a song about two kids taking a taking a bus trip across the country, and I got to thinking, you know, whatever happened to them? So. Uh, Welcome to Hum Along. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we timed it just right. She said as she held out a hand, to the warm August breeze Well I said you're crazy Just look at this traffic We should have left Sag Harbor an hour ago Oh that's not what I meant And you know it Besides when the sun's on the water It's so hard to go No, Walter, I meant you and me Through no fault of our own We were born on the crest of a wave Well, we lived our lives with the wind at our back Blown free from the summer of love To the winter of HIV Now nothing's free Feels like we're refugees in this post-American century Oh, Cat, you're thinking too much There was never a plan We just did it one day to the next We were passing Shea Stadium at 10 miles an hour I said nothing good lasts Just ask the Mets I thought I caught her smiling For a second we were young And I fell in love again Oh Walter, I'm worried this time This hurricane business It's just the edge of the storm Oh, our grandkids should hate us for not banning fracking. Well, what will we tell them after everything's washed to see? Just a memory and the refugees in a post-American city. This post-American century Oh, cat, why not close your eyes? Tomorrow is chemo, and you know how tired you get But she shook her head, said, no, I'm not missing The skyline at sunset is still as good as it gets I told her I would wake her I hummed a lullaby And I just let her be Just watched her sleep Through this post-American century hmm. This post-American 
19th century This post-American Thank you. Thanks so much. I'm going to uh, take a minute and uh, read a read a short chapter from uh, from my novel. It's actually called uh, "The Next uh, Big Thing," not "Next Best Thing." Uh, my own band was not the next big thing, <laughs> but that's what fiction is for, right? Okay. So. Uh, uh, this is uh, a little ways into the book, so all you really need to know is that uh, the main character, who's named Mark, is the singer and guitar player of this band, Shadowland, who has moved to, uh, to Boston from Ohio. And they've finally released their, uh, their album after five years of kind of clawing their way through the Boston scene. And they were so behind schedule on the record that Mark had to drive to the pressing plant on Long Island the day of the show to, uh, to get the records and was driving so fast that he was in a car accident and managed to break his wrist, which is not what you want to do if you're a guitar player. Um, so we pick up the story uh, just a few weeks later. Fast forward, Worcester, Mass, January 1986. Are you sure the Rolling Stones played here? Chaz is standing on the empty stage at Sir Morgan's Cove in Worcester, our first gig since the release concert. If I assumed having a record out meant we'd automatically be granted respect, creature comforts, and the adoration of the masses, apparently I was mistaken. That's the downside of having our album out on a hole in the middle, Wayne's label. It's a record company in name only. No advertising budget, no tour support, no payola or arm twisting to get our single on the radio. If the TAM had been an adrenaline high, give or take me needing my arm in a sling, Sir Morgan's is the equivalent of the morning after. Dark, grungy, not much of a crowd, aside from a few carloads who have made the hour's drive from Boston. Hell yes, the Stones played here, shouts a burly guy at the bar with a graying ponytail and a black leather Hell's Angels jacket with the sleeves ripped off. 350 people packed inside, another 10,000 in the street just trying to get in. Just like tonight. Were you here, Boone asks. The angel takes a drag on his cigarette like it's a joint. I could lie and say I carried Keith's guitar for him, but I think it was Ronnie Woods. I remember reading about it in Rolling Stone. It was a warm-up date for their 81 tour the month before we moved here. It's almost worth the trip to play on the same stage, even if it wasn't the Brian Jones Beggar's Banquet era Stones. We start our set. Chaz looks bored, and Will's smile looks especially pasted on. Worse, there are big video screens on either side of the stage, which the club hasn't bothered shutting off. So while I sing, I'm flanked by close-ups of Wham! and Brian Adams lip-syncing their latest hits. It's really bugging me, and finally, as Boone starts the intro to Same Heart Twice, I hold up my cast-free hand. Could somebody please shut those off? I say over the mic as Wang Chung's giant dueling haircuts fill the screens. I wait a few seconds, squinting through the stage lights to see if anyone from the club is paying attention. Evidently not, because the video's irritating jump cuts proceed without interruption. I'm serious, I say. We're not playing till it's off. The few people on the dance floor start drifting back to their tables. Mark, Will hisses out of the side of his mouth. We're losing him. Let's just finish the damn set. I look back at the band. Chaz is rolling his eyes, and Boone looks like he could go either way. But I don't want the distraction. We need to be great tonight. Kat's here, her first time seeing us. I'm about to give the club another ultimatum when I make out a sizable figure approaching the stage. Finally, then I realize it's the Hell's Angel looking about as wide as your average refrigerator. Give you 20 bucks to pull his ponytail, Will says under his breath. <laughs> I'm flashing on Altamont, where Marty Balin of the Jefferson Airplane got knocked unconscious by an angel before the Stones even took the stage. 
Then halfway across the dance floor, the angel pivots and heads for the sound table. I can only see his back, but the winged motorcycle helmet logo seems to swell and levitate as he raises his muscle and fat bound arms and rests his knuckles on size 48 hips. Wang Chung's poofy dues abruptly vanish as the screens go dark and there's a ripple of applause as Boone resumes the intro. After the set, damn if the Hells Angel doesn't get up and carry Boone's guitar for him. Thank you, thank you so much. And I should mention that, um, um, uh, first off, I, I'm stunned that you've written how many, four novels now? Ten? Ten? Um, I, it took me, you know, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm still stunned and amazed. So uh, congratulations on that. Uh, just doing, doing the one almost killed me. But I, I, I should mention that actually the, there's also a soundtrack for the, for the book, which is, which is kind of fun. So when the movie gets made, I'm, I'm ready, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm totally ready. And, um, so this is a, this is a, a song from the, the soundtrack, and uh, and the band has moved to to Boston from from this little town in Ohio, and uh, this is the last song that Mark's right Mark writes before they they leave Ohio, and he gets asked at one point in the story if he'd ever think about going back, and he says, "Not even in a box." <laughs> Seems the kids back in town settle down in the same spot. Got their own special corner, they're born right on to the grave plot. If the jobs hold out, they're fine. Safe inside that county line. Never see, never know, never taste, never touch, never dream, never go, never ask for too much. Every week bow their heads while they wait for the Savior. But they're just killing time till time returns the favor. When I look in your eyes, see the same kind of hunger. Like two birds in a cage, spread our wings and we wonder. Like we know down in our bones, somewhere out there must be home. Wanna see, wanna know, wanna taste, wanna touch, wanna dream, wanna go, wanna grab for so much, wanna feel every skin, every heat, every flavor. Now I'd be just killing time till time returns the favor. Won't spend my whole life dying day by day. Watching every burning sun just fade to gray. Wanna see, wanna know, wanna taste, wanna touch, wanna dream, wanna go, wanna grab for so much, wanna see, wanna know, wanna taste, wanna touch, wanna dream, wanna go, wanna grab for so much, wanna feel every skin, every heat, every flavor. I'll be just killing time, to time returns, yeah, they're just killing time, to time returns, not be just killing time. So time returns the favor.
going to do uh, one more quick one for you. Uh, and, and thanks again uh, to HCAM for, for, for doing this for nine years now. This is, this is great. And I'm also uh, hope that the, you know, the Alfred Hitchcock birds behind us, you know, hold out for another few minutes before they, before they swoop in for the kill. Love is confusing, now love is complex well, He took a piece of your heart when he left But I place my bet there's a piece of your heart that remains Well, all I need to proceed in good faith Is faith you're proceeding the same You thought he was perfect, and maybe he is He's perfectly happy to leave you like this Well, perfect I'm not, but I'm strong And I'm open to change well, All I need to proceed in good faith Is faith you're proceeding the same now I don't believe that a wound must be kept bandaged And I don't think anyone's doomed to fail in love Somehow the human heart can manage To rise above its pain So you're scared of the future, you're scared of the night Well, I'll take your hand when we turn out the light You can cry for as long as you need Till no tears remain Well, all I need to proceed in good faith Is faith you're proceeding the same all that I need to proceed in good faith Is faith you're proceeding the same Love is confusing now Love is complex I love being a poet because I can be myself. If I don't want to, I can be someone else. I can dress in all black and say, hi, I'm Johnny Cash. Or be a little Elvisy and say, thank you, thank you very much. I can jump shop and boogie anytime, any place, whether I'm 53 or 73. I love rock and roll. Even if I bust a move to rap, imitate Fred Astaire with a cane and a hat, or snap my fingers to Frank and the Rat Pack. Today, I can say I feel good. It wasn't always this way. Because that uneasy heartbeat that makes you tired during the day but unable to sleep at night means something. Because I speak the truth. And if it scares you too bad, and if it makes you cry, you know I'm right there crying with you. Because your story needs to be told, no matter how difficult. Because the man in mankind is not always nice, but a lullaby, a sweet dream's kiss, or a gentle caress can travel to faraway lands. Because a lonely, sick, or afraid person might hear my words, and for a moment, if only for a moment, dream of a better world. I want to make that better world a better world every day. I can ride the insane train of our runaway lives, be propelled through the universe, transcend prejudice around the world, and still end up right here with you. If you've lost your way or need a strong voice, take my words. Everyone deserves a choice. Quiet voices needn't be quiet anymore. I love being a poet because nothing compares to the first light of day across the ocean at 3.30 a.m. 
its magnificence stirs my soul. It teaches me to love myself like no one else ever could. It's better than pills, and it allows me to love my woman like no one else better or should. And because the more I write, the more I read. The more I read, the more I know. The more I know, the better it will go. Because when things go bad, I am sad. When things go well, you can tell. So I'll keep on writing happy or sad, and especially if I'm mad. But if I'm overjoyed, don't think I'm going to let that go. Oh, no. Because the more I care, the more I share. And that really does make all the difference. I love being a poet because I can soar on those mighty wings of inspiration till there's no tomorrow. Because it lights a dark day, takes the pain away, and is by far the most important thing that ever came our way. I love being a poet for the love of poetry. For the love of poetry. And I know you all feel it. I sure do. And that, my friends, is why I share my poetry with you. Thank you. and pear apricot then there